yo 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 Yes, it's Monday. Back to the work week. Good morning. Back to the work week, man. How y'all feeling this morning? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored. How you, Envy? I feel amazing. Blessed, Great beige, weekend. and highly favored? Yeah, I'm, I'm blessed, black, and highly favored, sir. Allegedly. Yeah, no, it's no allegedly. I am. <laughs> if you, got, you sound allegedly to me. No, nope, not allegedly. Nope, nope, not at all. How was your weekend? Mine was great, man. Uh, uh, the weather in New York, New Jersey was was beautiful. It was like 60 degrees. So I wouldn't know. I wasn't here. It wasn't here. No, it was beautiful. So uh, I just took the kids. Like, you know, my kids are heavily into sports. So uh, I did a lot of training with Jackson with basketball. And then I took my daughters to uh, the batting range. And uh, they're getting ready for their softball season. So I just had a great week and did a lot, whole lot of nothing, which sometimes is needed. Oh, nah. I was all over the place. I was in uh, Key West, Florida on Friday. Mm-hmm. And then um, this uh, Saturday and Sunday, I was in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Salute to Columbus, Ohio. Mm-hmm. I was out there because my daughter had a cheerleading competition. And there was a lot of things going on in Columbus this weekend. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize... Um, Two chains opened up one of his uh, Escobar restaurants in Columbus mm-hmm. this weekend. So he had the grand opening of that. Uh, Little Duval. Was there doing a comedy show with okay. uh, Nard and Jay Ski and uh, Erica Duchess? So I didn't even I didn't know that was going on either. Mm-hmm. I just happened to be in Columbus for my daughter's really? the competition. It was like, oh man, my man Dubois here, and it was good because you know uh, our, our, our good brother uh, Clay Evans, mm-hmm. he transitioned this weekend, so it was just good to be around my people because I know they I know that they whether they say they good or not, I know they was really really feeling it, man. Absolutely, because you know? Clay was a. You know, he was not only their manager, but their, their best friend, a good friend to all of us, mm-hmm. you know. So it was good to be with, be with our peoples this weekend. All right. And how'd your yes. daughter do? Uh, third or fourth place, something like that. Okay. I know she was third place one day. I think fourth. I think they finished fourth place okay. on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> and I, was in, I was in Key West on Friday, man. Um, I went to the the premiere of uh, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, the movie. Now, for those of us who grew up on Judy Bloom? who grew up with Big Bloom energy, who grew up reading all Judy Bloom's mm-hmm. books from Iggy's House to the, the Fudge series to All You There, God, It's Me, Margaret Blubber, all of those great books. Let me tell you something, man. That movie that's coming out next month, I think it's April 28th, is fantastic. So you flew out to Florida for the... You damn right. Me, my wife, and my oldest daughter. Y'all okay? flew out for the kid movie? You de- First of all, it's not a kid movie. It's a young adult movie. All right, don't you ever disrespect Judy Bloom like that. It's not Sorry. a kid movie. It's a young adult movie. Okay. All right. And if you loved the book growing up, which millions and millions of people did, that movie captures the magic of the book times 100. You talk about a feel-good movie. I'm still happy right now. I came down off the joy of, of Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, since Jesus. Friday night. You hear me? All right. That's right, damn it. Okay. Nah, right, you sit there. Okay, you'll see. Whatever floats your boat. How many daughters you got? I got four. They're going to love it. Okay. They're going to love it. All right. From Madison to uh, Brooklyn Payton. to Indianapolis <laughs> to, London, to Syracuse. To <laughs> who else you want? <laughs> okay. <laughs> to, the, to all them cities you got, they're going to love it. My goodness. Okay. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. We got front page news with Tez coming up in a second. What Tez we got? and Figaro. You show me something? What we got? We got a new song or something? Yeah. What's that? Oh, okay. Yeah, but you can play that. I need that right now in my what life. What is that? Play it. Let's do it. Yes. Oh, come on now. It's come Monday now. morning. Come on now. You Let's get the work week started. Come on now. It's Mary J. Blige. Be happy. Get your ass you up. You got the energy high this morning. Next. I like this. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good it's morning. DJ NV Charlemagne the God. Happy. We are the Breakfast it's Club. I love as mine. It'll be so Now let's get in some front page news. Now, NCAA tournament, uh, Atlantic beat Kansas State, San Diego State beat Creighton, Miami, Florida beat Texas, and UConn beat Gonzaga. Now, let's Drop get... on the clues bond for the University of Miami, damn it. The Hurricanes for the first time ever in the Final Four. You know, that's in the, the notorious uh, football school. Football school, yeah. Yeah, you see them in the Final Four in basketball. I, I know Uncle Luke somewhere happy. Yeah, Logan's going in next year. Now, let's talk you about... You going to Miami? Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Man, drop on the clues bond for Logan. Once the University of Miami. Mm-hmm. Ain't gonna never look at another white girl again once you get down there. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about this tornado. <laughs> well, that was a good transition. Good morning, Breakfast Club good family. Morning. Hey. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, at least 26 people were killed and dozens injured after powerful storms and at least one tornado plummeted the southeast on Friday night. 
With the maximum winds of 170 miles per hour, the tornado flattened much of the community of Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Now, Rolling Fork, Mississippi is a small town of less than 2,000 residents and is over 70% black. It is also the home of blues singer Muddy Waters. Rolling Fork Mayor Walker says that his city is completely gone. Take a listen to his response to the devastation. How has the loss impacted you personally? Personally, it, it, it has taken a lot out of me, not just being the mayor, but I'm also the local funeral director of this community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've lost friends and it's devastating and it's heart shaking. And uh, I extend my condolences to the families who's lost, who's lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just horrible. So sad. Yeah, that's deep. Uh, you know, that particular clip just really touched me because he went on to say that he had to, you know, bury folks and, and still be the mayor and have the the town just completely just gone, literally. So I want to give a quick shout out to Angel by Nature, uh, Trader Truth. Uh, he went down on Saturday mm -hmm. to help with the devastation. He has family there as well. And everyone that has lost someone or going through that, you can donate uh, to assist uh, uh, Rolling uh, Hills and to any credible source, you know, such as the American. Red Cross or grassroots organizations like uh, Angel by Nature. We have to, you know, move forward from just sending thoughts and prayers and actually, you know, do something about it. Do what we can. I agree with you, Ted. Mm -hmm. Natural disasters are something that folks should never ignore because the reality is that can be any of us at Correct. any given time. It could be anything. It could be a tornado, a hurricane, an earthquake. You just mm -hmm. never know when uh, Mother Nature is going to do what it do. So when you see somebody in need because of a natural disaster, you should uh, support any way you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now let's talk about this father uh, accused of choking his two-year-old on FaceTime. What happened with that, Tess? This is so crazy, guys. I'm sure many of you have seen this story trending uh, over the weekend. In Houston, Texas, a father accused of choking his two-year-old daughter while on FaceTime with the mother. Let's listen to the report by KPRC Channel 2 in Houston. DeAndre Flanagan wears a yellow jumpsuit with his hands behind his back in handcuffs as he appears for the first time in front of a judge. The 25-year-old charged with murder. Investigators say he picked up his two-year-old daughter from daycare, went to the mom's job at Walmart, threatened her, then led law enforcement on a 30-mile chase with his daughter in the passenger seats without a seatbelt or car seats. Prosecutors say he video called the child's grandmother. In that FaceTime, they were watching the defendant strangle and assault the two-year-old as he demanded uh, Ms. Watson's phone password. Jesus Christ, yeah, man. This is crazy. Let mm. me recap it and give you guys a little bit more background and we can discuss. So he, he took the child out of the daycare and then he went to the mom's job at Walmart and then threatened to hurt the child if she did not give him the phone. So the mother did give him the cell phone, but then Flanagan still refused to hand over the child. He went on a high speed chase. And while he was in the high speed chase, he FaceTimed the mother asking for the passcode to the phone. When she refused, documents say that Flanagan started hitting the child and choking her while still on FaceTime with the mother. Jesus. After hanging up with the girl's mother, court documents say that Flanagan FaceTimed his father then and said that his daughter was now gone. I don't believe in hell after you go, Jesus. but this is one of those times where I really wish there was proof of one because folks who do things like this deserve to know this is where you go when you commit mm -hmm. these kind of acts. My Absolutely. God. And I know they say you can pray for repentance for things, but it's hard for me to yeah. believe the God I serve forgives all, especially yeah. crimes like this. Man, what this the is hell? crazy. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. And he had a history. Uh, apparently, they had called uh, the police about five days prior to that. Uh, and, you know, it, it led up to this. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, again, prayers to that mother. I just cannot imagine that as mm. a mother, for sure, can't imagine that level of uh, de devastation that she's going through. So prayers to her. All right. Well, get it off. Thank you, Tez. And we'll see you next hour. No problem. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Break it up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Tario, get it off your chest. Go. All right, here we go. Listen, man, I want to talk about the open water and fentanyl situation that's going on around the country right now, man. I done lost too many people to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want y'all to bring awareness because a lot of people thinking this is a game. They're playing with the Grim Reaper. And that's just some stuff that you don't do because what you get with him, 
it ain't no coming back if you lose this game. You feel? Yeah, I think the problem yeah. is a lot of people doing fentanyl and don't know they doing fentanyl because a lot, you know, they putting well, it in the cocaine and they putting it in the in the weed. I heard the weed. I don't know how true that yeah. is, but I've been hearing the weed. And they said there's this new drug that these kids are using that is 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 not affect Narcon does not uh, you know affect it at all. So if they get high and they o OD on it. The Narcom won't even help them. It's a new drug. They said it's big in Philly. It's starting to hit places like Florida and, and places in the Bronx as well. So it's, it's scary it's out there. It's sad because people playing with the Grand Reaper, son. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What people about... People playing literally with the Grand Reaper. And what you see him and he win, that's check me. You ain't lying, man. Everybody, there's people out here who just want to do cocaine. They just want to do pure organic cocaine. But they got to get it cut with the fentanyl. Why? What about them? Well, they, they shouldn't be using cocaine either. You but. right. Hello, who's this? Hey. Hey, what's your name, bro? Um, I'm just, uh, Ron. Can I... What's up, Ron? Get off your chest, bro. I just, I just heard about that guy who um, took that child and, um, with a lady's job and strangled it. Yep. And it, it's disgusting. I, I think that um, they should just prosecute him. You know what I mean? You said you think that you, you... he's mentally, mentally ill or something like that. Oh, you said you think he should be prosecuted. He should be prosecuted. Yeah, he, should uh, he be. will be. Yeah, he what will you be. Mean? You don't got to worry about that. Absolutely. He will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. He should get the death penalty. I, I'm with you. I'm not, I'm not mad at that either. Hello, who's this? This Cos from Nook. How you doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Cos, what up? Brother. Get it off your chest. Well, I just want to give a shout out to my wife, D Base. You know, we had a success. We just bought a house. Congrats. Out here, you know, in the city in Jersey. So we doing that financial thing. I also want to give a shout out to um, another MC that I'm working with, Outspoken from North. Okay. We just did a uh, collab with Benny the Butcher. So my name is uh, Lazy Kaj, Lazy underscore Kaj. You can catch me on uh, Instagram. Check it out. We ain't late. We ain't uh, sent it out yet, but we will soon. As soon as we get all the rights for it. Okay. Get it off hey, your nothing, man. Good morning, man. Uh, you know what? I'm off today. You know what I'm saying? I'm usually uh, uh, not off on the weekdays. So these, these are my favorite times when I get to wake up and come from my own home and listen to the Breakfast Club. So this is dope. Thank you, brother. What's going on? Get it off your chest. Oh, yo, real quick. Uh, I wanted to. I wanted to tell you. Uh, tell y'all. Yo, I, I, I love y'all. Y'all love for Barry J. Blige, and I love Mary J. Blige too. But why y'all always choose "Be Happy" as the first song to play when y'all think about Mary J. Blige? Because I think that's all that's really in the system. No, I mean there's a lot of oh, Mary okay. J. Blige records in the system, but I think that's what's really in the system. Well, we don't play that oh, record okay. necessarily because it's Mary J. Blige. It's the is be happy. We want people to be happy. I want to be happy Monday morning. And by the way, that really is one of those records you that I use play, to change my mind. You could play, you could play, uh, you could play, uh, the, what was that? The, this thing, no hate or race shit. But nope. you could have started it off with that. I'm, I'm with that, happy this morning, bro. Listen, do you suffer from like anxiety or any like bouts of depression? Uh yeah, me too, right? And so for me, I have certain records that change my mood instantly. Be happy is on that is on Absolutely. that playlist. You know what I'm saying? So I think we ch okay. th that, that's why we intentionally choose that record. All those records you're talking about are great, but that record right there it really sets your intention because it's telling you what you want. You just want to be happy. Just want you to just be happy, especially on a Monday morning. You might have had a rough week. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hey, what's up? Oh, uh, hey, hey, peace and blessings, guys. How you doing? What's up, brother? I'm good, brother. Get off your chest. Bad, bad, bad. Hey, Charlotte, man. Good morning. Peace, King. Oh, man. It's Sean Stone, by the way. Any uh, special guests today? No, we don't have no guests host today. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow and the rest of the week. Okay. I, I just want to shout out my son real quick, man. He scored three goals yesterday at soccer. My eight-year-old son, Chase Stone. So I say, Daddy, love you, man. But it's just very heartbreaking to hear that, uh, you know, about that two-year-old. Yeah, horrible. I mean... Yeah, um, you know, you know, if, if if there's any parents out there that don't want their kids, you know, Sean Stone would take them. You know, I love the kids. I, I love raising kids. Um, and for that, for that man to kill that two year old like that is, I didn't even like hearing that story on the radio a while ago, man. Me yeah, neither. To even see, to even know that those kind of evil people exist on this planet, my God, man. And Sean, yeah, be care yeah. and be careful with your with your son with, with soccer too. You know, um. A lot of people, you know, advise me to put my son in soccer over uh -huh. basketball and over football and over uh, baseball. But they're saying a lot of kids get concussions 
playing soccer because a lot of times they hit the ball with their heads. So just to just be extra careful and you know keep an eye on your yeah. son. You know. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. So I'm just wondering if Charlamagne going to give this dude uh, Donkey today, even though that's not going to even change or help anything, bro. Um, you know I mean? it's possible. I'm looking through my donkeys right now for the morning. But have a good one, Sean. Oh damn, hung up on him. Didn't mean to do that. You meant to do that. I didn't do that. You definitely didn't. No, no, I didn't. It's disrespectful. I didn't mean to do that. That's so horrible. I didn't mean to do that. Get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. When we come back, we got your rumor report. We'll tell you about Megan Good, who she hung up on when he was just trying to shoot a shot. All right, we'll get into the next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. All right, morning everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Anneli Chopper. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name, or you gossiping, or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on the Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On the Breakfast Club. Now, NLE Chopper, shout to NLE Chopper. He was on Jason Lee's show. He, of course, he has a show on Revolt. And he was talking about who his crush was, and he said his crush was Megan Good. Well, Jason Lee trying to be the matchmaker called Megan Good, and this is what happened live. This next one, she's recently single, Megan Good. My, we're waiting on her. Yes, like, yes, man. Like, listen. Let me call Megan real quick. Hey, you got Megan number? She got to answer. I could be a preacher, all that. What else you want me to be? Megan. This is Jason Lee. This is my other phone. I'm filming right now with a rapper who just said your name. We're playing a game called Smash or Pass. I put up Megan Good and he almost fell out of his chair. Everybody else has been getting passes. Say, say hello to NLE Chopper. He hasn't given me this much energy the whole interview, but now I see every tooth in his mouth. <laughs> Hi. Hey, hey, how you doing, Meg? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm extremely blessed. Um, I was just telling. She hung up. <laughs> Damn. Oh, that's Jason Lee fault. That's Jason Lee fault for, uh, you know, it's a surprising making good with a phone call. You got to send a text or something and say, yo, can I call you? There's a rapper here that want to holler at you. If you call her on the spot in the middle of your show and she realized, damn, I'm on a podcast or I'm on the radio or something. Yeah, she might hang up. He didn't even get to shoot his shot yet. That, that's, that's Jason Lee fault. Jason Lee lined you up incorrectly. Well, and <laughs> well she did call back, right? I you hung up on me. No, I did not. My mother was calling, and I was trying to, to tell her like I would, you know, call back, and then it ended it. And I was like, no. Uh, pretty much, I, I was saying that you was, you know, you was pretty much back on the market. I wanted to do something real sweet for you. Uh, I don't know. I didn't want to give you too much because I wanted it to be a surprise, like roses and dinner, or something like that. But. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray on it, though, because I don't know if that's <laughs> far reach or not. She's so. going to cuss me out in a Christian way when I'm, we get done with this call. I'm yeah. off for the praying about it, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm strong on prayer, extremely strong. You know, I've been, I actually been praying to meet you. you know, and look so. at God. He yeah. just blessed you that's right crazy. now. That's why I got that excited. Well, that's not Jason Lee fault, then. Because <laughs> she called back. She did call back. But Anna Lee Chopper, boy, you so full of it. Talk about you was praying on it. You know that woman is a woman of God, so you played the God card to get Megan good. He did. Dropping the clues my family, Chopper. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> he could have planned that out a little better. You could tell he was all over the place. He was like, I, I want to pray flowers. about it. What I'm going to do roses, pray about it. But I want it to be a surprise, and I'm going to pray on it. But you could tell he got caught up, right? He did. Because he said, he said, I'm going to pray about it. But then he said, I actually was praying to meet you. <laughs> you should have just left out the I'm going to pray <laughs> about it. What you should have said was, I've been praying to meet you. And Man, look how God answered this call. This is God, Megan. That's what you should have said, NLE Chopper. But you was on the spot. I understand. He was on the spot. He was nervous. Yeah. That's his crush. He was nervous. All right. Now, uh, it looks like Beyonce and Adidas mutually agreed to part ways after five years of working together. Now, rumor has it uh, Adidas uh, expected to make $250 million, but the brand only delivered $40 million in sales. So uh, it looks like they won't be working with each other again. But Beyonce has already started collaborations with Balmain. So it looks like uh, they're going to be doing some things together. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. All right. Now, we got to send. Um, I ain't never got an Ivy Park box. Me neither. Exactly. So that's the reason why <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I just, story does nothing for me. And I'm, a, I'm a Pinkett Smith Winfrey Noah Carter, but nah, you know they never sent me one even. I know? see a lot of people that got in the show. That's all I kept it. thinking was like, I guess y'all ain't getting no more Ivy Park boxes now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess at least for the moment, <laughs> right? Now, uh, lastly, we got to send a rest in peace to Clay Evans. He was Man. the uh, VP of Grand Hustle. Uh, he represented T.I., uh, Little Duval, so many different people. Uh, Travis Scott at one time. Uh, no, still still Travis. Ski, still Travis. Yeah. So many different people. Jay so. Ski. A lot of people. Yeah, he, he passed away uh, Thursday night, right? 
He died on Thursday night, March 23rd, according to uh, the post by his son. So Listen, definitely man. rest in peace, peace. And I seen you took a picture with him about what, like a week ago? No, that wasn't a week ago. That was uh, actually, that was a month ago. A month ago. A month ago. Yeah, yeah. We was at the uh, Trap City Cafe in Atlanta, you know, um, laughing, building like we always do when we see each other. And then later that night when, uh, you know, Duval and Jay Ski joined me and Clay, because it was just me, Clay, and my wife, uh, you know, they came in and then we was kicking it. And then, you know, we took a picture together. And, you know, this weekend in Columbus, uh, I was with Duval and Jay Ski and, you know, we took a, a pic. And if Clay was still here, he would have been in that pic because, you know, he was mm -hmm. be on the road with them all the time. So it was just a reminder to me to, like, enjoy every single moment with your people. Absolutely. You know, just you, you have to. You have to enjoy every single moment mm -hmm. with your people. And sometimes we don't understand, you know, the, the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Correct. You know? So for me, that's the last time uh, I saw Clay was literally a month ago. Mm -hmm. Sitting in Trap City Cafe in Atlanta. So just just salute to the good brother Clay Evans, man. Solid as they come. You know, the definition of ten toes down, a true spirit. Like Absolutely. Clay wasn't a ghost, he was a spirit. And if you ever had a conversation with him, if you ever got cursed out by him, then you totally understand why he was a special human to so many people. And then the truth is everybody needs a Clay Evans. Like that person who isn't jealous or envious of you, that person who doesn't want to be you, that person who just wants to play that position to make sure you can be the best version of yourself because when you're the best version of yourself, it means more for the whole team and that's who Clay was and still is. So, you know, rest in peace to uh, Clay Evans, man. Definitely. You will be forever loved. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Now, when we come back, we got front page news. Uh, Donald Trump, he was in Waco, Texas over the weekend. We'll fill you in, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get into some front page news. Good morning, Tesla Figaro. Good morning, Breakfast Club family. Good morning. Let's get in, let's start with Donald Trump. He was rallying over the weekend, huh? Yes, he was rallying in true Trump fashion. Uh, former President Donald Trump, despite being under five investigations, held a campaign rally on Saturday in Waco, Texas. Now, his decision to hold the rally in Waco has raised eyebrows because this year marks the 30 year uh, mark of the 1993 far right standoff with the government. Now, on Friday, the day before the rally on his truth social media platform, Trump posted a picture with him and a baseball bat next to the image of District Attorney Alvin Bragg. Now, as you know, Alvin Bragg is the New York District Attorney who is investigating Trump for the hush money payment. Now, on this post, Trump warned that an indictment risked potential death and destruction that could be catastrophic for the nation. Shortly after the post, an envelope containing white powder and a threatening message, Alvin, I'm going to kill you, was delivered to Alvin Bragg's office. Trump spoke on the investigation at the rally. Let's listen to what he had to say. We'll talk about it on the other side. The District Attorney of New York, under the auspices and direction of the Department of Injustice in Washington, D.C., was investigating me for something that is not a crime, not a misdemeanor, not an affair. I never liked horse face. I never liked it. I never, it's just not. It's a terrible thing. You know, it's interesting. It shouldn't raise any eyebrows that uh, Trump did this in Waco because Trump knows exactly what he's doing and why he's doing it. He got his whole base riled up telling him he was going to get arrested. He raised like $1.5 in three days. Then he turns around and goes to Waco, holds a rally, raises more money, fires his supporters up even more. It, it's amazing to me how a guy who's a non-politician, uh, executive producer of Celebrity Apprentice, is better at politics than these uh, career politicians. Well, politi politics has a lot to do with the perception of reality. I, I say PR is the perception of reality. So you just said it yourself. He is a uh, media mogul. Yep. He understands how to work the media. And so basically he got his base all up in a frenzy, uh, not, you know, knowing for sure if he was going to be arrested or not. Uh, it makes it looks like uh, it makes it look like uh, Alvin Bragg's office is avoiding uh, the indictment, which, uh, again, they say that that is not true and they will not be intimidated. So, I mean, he knows how to manipulate the media, you know, period, point blank. Uh, and it's working as far as his base. But again, uh, Alvin, uh, uh, Alvin Bragg's office said they will not be intimidated. They will move forward with the investigation and how it looks. Charlemagne is there. They say they're not going to rush, uh, basically, you know, just based upon Trump's an antics, if you will. But we'll see. Now this is one of those things where they need to either do it, you know, with what they say, poop or get off the pot. Now they say what Trump didn't do that. They said one of his uh, people allegedly put that post, that picture up. That's why he took it down so fast. 
Well, they say, you know, but we don't. Somebody put it up, and you said, know. And again, mm-hmm. right. And again, uh, like we just heard on the clip, uh, he's calling out, you know, uh, the prosecutor in the rally. So, you know, whether it's a uh, photo or not, he's literally calling him out in the rally. So he's not uh, ducking from his position on feeling as if he's being set up. And they said they sold thousands of T-shirts over the weekend that said "God, Guns, and Trump" yes. at this rally. Yo, Trump is Trump is yo. He, he, he's he's a master master marketer like it's, it's actually unbelievable how good he is at this <laughs> and how people fall for it every single time Mm-mm-mm. now let's talk about jonathan mages what what went down with jonathan mages and we've seen you very vocal online about it so what happened with jonathan mages yeah i was very vocal about it uh, as were so many others on saturday uh, for those who've been paying attention jonathan majors was arrested in connection uh, with a domestic dispute now the creed three actor was charged with strangulation assault and harassment according to the police report now allegedly majors was the one that called 911 uh, from his penthouse apartment when he got there uh, cops noticed that she was injured and then she told them that he hit her in the face grabbed her hand and and put his hand around her throat now again this is all alleged uh now majors attorney has released a statement saying that jonathan majors is completely innocent and that the evidence includes video footage from the vehicle where the episode took place a uh, witness testimony from the drivers and others who heard and saw the episode and uh the attorney also says that two written statements from the woman uh, who was claiming to be assaulted has recanted of uh, those allegations now a judge granted a limited order of protection against majors and is expected in court on may 8th now my, my thing is with this is mm-hmm. you know i posted online uh envy to let's wait and see you know i never mm-hmm. said if he did it or he did not do it because the internet definitely doesn't know if he did or did not uh, and i just find it amazing that just saying wait on the information opposed to responding in the first 15 seconds you know uh, created a firestorm you know the show uh, first 48 at least has 48 hours to solve the case so it's amazing to me that the internet can be judge and jury in a matter of seconds uh you know just for clarity i do not support you know violence against women i was one of the lead publicists in the oklahoma city City rape case where 13 black women were raped by Officer Hosclough. So obviously, uh, this man is guilty of what uh, you know he has been, uh, you know, what she said that he did. Then we'll deal with that accordingly. But I do think it is important, you know, that uh, we at least wait, you know, more than 24 hours uh, to see what what comes back. Yeah, I mean, yep. you know, like you just said, Taz, you know, uh, you know, he, he called 911. From his Chelsea apartment. That wasn't even allegedly. Police sources said that. And, you know, he said the young lady was causing problems. And we just found this information out, uh, you know, reading the recent reports that came out. So I don't, to your point, I don't like social media playing judge, jury, and executioner without all the facts. You know, it's actually sad how quick we are to demonize people based off allegations and accusations. And, you know, there is no due process on social media whatsoever. And there shouldn't be because... Social- now, they didn't drop him, but they did pull the ads with him on it. What, what do you think about that? I mean, m- most most companies do things like that when situations like this arise. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll pull the ads until, until further notice. You know, no, nobody wants to be associated with these kind of allegations and accusations. I mean, if it's proven that, you know, he didn't do that, they'll probably start running the ads again, more than likely. But that's not like unheard of for a company mm-hmm. to do that yeah what I, what I think is also interesting you know less than a month ago remember how everybody was talking about the photos that he took uh with michael b jordan and how yep. gentle he looked and how caring he looked and it's just so amazing you know that then everyone well not everyone but a lot of people were talking about how gentle he is and now a lot of those same people are saying he's a monster so my question is you know the internet basically tells you what to think about a person right. you didn't know if he was gentle then you didn't know if he was a monster then just because he took a loving and caring photo and you don't know if he's a monster now because we don't have all the information so it, it really this really just kind of points to how uh, quickly you know things can change and your opinion is really you know guided by past trauma a lot of past trauma and what you see you know on the internet That's so right. just take a break and calm down and the truth will eventually surface you know, I say it all the time people wake up in the morning and wait for social media to tell them what to think and feel about something social media will change your whole narrative about a person based off allegations and what everybody thinks about said allegations. That's right. All right, well. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and what happens if people find out that none of this was true? 
Right. Where's the apology? Is there going to be right. any? Because Michael Irvin still ain't getting none. Right. <laughs> and, That's exactly it. You know it. what I mean? Michael Irvin got accused of, you know, uh, similar things during Super Bowl weekend. Found out those things weren't true. And what? Did anybody come out and uh, was, was the apology as loud no, as, 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 as the slander? Definitely not. Right. Or did she get charged, you know, oh, for lying. falsifying documents? Because that's right. a real charge. So, you know, it, it's a lot to unpack with this. We want to stay connected to the story because I think there's a lot of discussion uh, that we can have. And I want to remind people, if you don't mind, um, this week I'll be hanging out again with you for Front Page News. Make sure you tap in to the Straight Shot No Chaser podcast on Thursday um, because I do dig a little bit deeper, you know, into these stories. And if you have any questions definitely send it to me on instagram by following me at teslin figaro and, and Te teslin will be at the uh first ever black effect podcast festival saturday april 22nd in atlanta at pullman yard she'll be part of the uh women in podcasting panel so you know pull up to atlanta and come meet teslin figaro up close and personal not That's too right. close though. we got security okay i mean right. you can't get too close well i well just for clear i am an m60 gunner uh in the air force a former veteran so pull up if you want to there you you'll go. find out that's right all right well, well get that, your tickets at a bit bright for the uh, first ever black effect podcast festival and that is front page news thank you tez face now when we come back let's open up the phone lines 800-585-1051 black china is removing a demonic tattoo on her hip. She says she's continuing her healing journey and she's ditching implants and fillers and she's removing this tattoo. Let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Uh, is there a tattoo that you hate that you want to remove or a tattoo that you removed already or a tattoo that you regret? Let's open up the phone lines. Let's discuss. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club that you would like to remove like maybe you have a stupid ass wolverine tattoo on your arm that you just hate or uh whatever it may be Charlemagne. first of all uh you a hater okay Why am I a hater and i do have wolverine tattooed on oh, my man, arm that was a good guess big, shut up you know i have wolverine <laughs> tattooed on my arm when i was set well first of all i'm a big marvel fan to this day when i was 17 years old uh you know tattoos were illegal in south carolina so there was a brother named t willis salute to t willis uh he was doing tattoos and uh, that's a tattoo I got on my arm. I got a tattoo of Wolverine holding a microphone in his hand because Wolverine, you know, uh, was and is my still my favorite Marvel character. You right. know what I mean? And uh, I used to think I wanted to be a rapper. But I'm not going to get this tattoo removed. If anything, I'm going to get it updated uh, as soon as I stop being a sucker and, uh, you know, uh, go out, be, be willing to take the pain because this tattoo does represent a lot for me because Wolverine... Um, Number one, what I loved about him was his healing powers. Mm -hmm. And so now I spend so much time having conversations, telling people to invest in their mental health and, you know, um, about, you know, why you should go on your healing journey. So now I understand why I, why I gravitated towards Wolverine at 17. And even though I didn't become a rapper, microphones did change my life. Okay. Because I'm talking in the one right now. Okay. Yes. But every other tattoo, I would definitely get rid of. <laughs> All, All right. these tattoos are stupid. Only tattoo I really like is this one. I got this in Miami. This is a uh, Never So Deep Records. A uh, salute to Doctor Robert Evans and um, you know, my man DJ Bless. You know, they from Rochdale, Queens, but they uh live in Somerville, South Carolina. So they started a label in South Carolina called Never So Deep uh, back in the day. And you know, Doctor Robert Evans is a great mentor of mine. And uh, he blesses my forever brother. So that's the only tattoo that actually means something okay. to me on my body. Yeah, I got two angels uh, on my arm representing uh, Madison and Logan, my two older kids, a long time ago. Uh, a UFC fighter booked me, I believe it was in Athens, to DJ a party. And uh, he, he after DJing, uh, he was kind of high. Mm -hmm. I would say allegedly, but I know he was. And uh, he and, you know, took me to his tattoo parlor and would not let me leave until he gave me a tattoo. And he was a UFC fighter and I couldn't get out. <laughs> now, wait a minute. That's not the story you told me. Yes, it is. No, you told me that the UFC fighter trapped you in the tattoo parlor mm -hmm. and he tattooed a devil on one ass cheek and another devil that's on another ass you. cheek. See, and when he you put your ass cheeks together, they kiss. No, that's not it. So that's he, not true? No, it's not it. So this UFC Why would you fighter, tell me this story? This UFC fighter had me out there and he was he was high, he was drunk, and he was like, I'm going to give you a tattoo, I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it free. And he put these two angels, I covered it now, but he put the two angels, they looked horrible, they didn't look that's like angels. That's not the story you told me that's when you lie. was high and drunk. That, the story what? you told me when you was high and drunk was the UFC fighter trapped you in a, a, a tattoo parlor, tattooed the two different devils on both ass cheeks, you and when you squeeze them I'm together, not, they kiss. No. Now, all of a sudden, all these years later, it's two angels and you got them covered up? I never heard this story, You're sir. lying. Hello, who's this? <laughs> Just make stuff up. Hello, yes, yeah, this is Byron. Hey, Byron, good morning. Good morning, how you doing? Now, your girl has a tattoo of her ex? 
a burnt egg. Congratulations! <laughs> oh my and, god! And she's not removing it. She's not removing it. So when I heard the question, I waited for a little bit. And I looked at her and I asked her. I said, so you got a so you think you want to be removed? Let me talk to that queen. Yeah, put her on the phone. Put, put that, that queen, queen on, the on the phone, man. This queen out here standing her ground. Good morning, queen. Good morning. How you doing? Now tell me why you're not uh, getting the tattoo removed because you might have to go back, right? <laughs> Don't you say that. <laughs> oh. I, told, I told years ago, eventually I would. We just haven't made that move yet. Nah, you got to take it because where's the tattoo at, mama? It's on my lower part of my stomach, but... No, hell no. So he hitting you from behind, <laughs> and then he got to see a man. No, forget it. No, forgetting it from the behind when he go downtown. <laughs> when he go downtown, he got to look another man's name right in his eyes as he's giving you. Oh my god. Oh, I would never go on you. And then she wonder why I don't do that. Yeah, that's right. It ain't. Yeah, that's right. It ain't because you Jamaican. It's because it's because you do not want to be down there, and you shouldn't do it until she get it removed. That's right. That's, that's right. what you should do, King. Do not go on yeah. her no more until she get that tattoo removed. No D until she gets that tattoo removed. No, give you give her some D. Don't give no, her no tongue. No D. No, no D or no tongue. What's the what's the person's name? Let it be a long name. Mm, uh, it's a long name. Damn, it's a long let me ask name. You, let me ask you a question. This is a little personal. What? What? You ever skied it on his name? <laughs> I'm always. I always. But that's crazy. That's crazy. It's kind of gay, to be honest. <laughs> with you. Yeah, it's a gay adjacent. <laughs> it's gay ish. <laughs> Kenya Barrett's going to do a show about you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 have a good one. And, uh, bro, I wouldn't give her no more D until she gets that name removed. Yo, that's crazy. Sure. Sure. Too. A, where y'all calling from? I'm just curious. Day in. Ohio. 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 All right. Salute to Ohio. I was just in Columbia. Man. That's kind of crazy that if is... you having sex with your lady, man, and you're thinking about skeeting on another man's name. You thought about that. He wasn't thinking about that. You thought about it. Well, that's my brain is silly. Yeah, your brain is silly. I don't think I could, you know, could you have sex with your, your girl or your wife and it's another name, another dude's name? That'd be a lot. That's too much for me. That'd be a lot. Nah. That'd be a lot. Nah. You know what we didn't ask? Has he married her? Has he made that commitment? Oh, Has maybe he that's what she's waiting to for. Her? You know what I mean? Like, that's probably what she is waiting for. Still, I can't. Cross it out then or something. Cover and it, it does cost to get them taps removed, too. It does. 800-585-1051. We're asking. Uh, we talk about Black China. She's uh, revealed she's getting her tattoo remu her removed. One of them is a demonic tattoo on her hip. So we're asking, is there a tattoo that you hate, that you want to get removed, that you regret? Let's talk about it. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Call me And your opinion to the Breakfast Club Top Come on 800-585-1051 Morning everybody, it's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy We are the Breakfast Club Now if you're just joining us, we're talking about Black China. She's uh, she's doing a lot She's uh, removing her implants And now she is taking this tattoo off of her hip they say it's a demonic tattoo. They said she's on a healing journey and she wants it off. So we're asking 800-585-1051. Do you have a tattoo that you removed or that you hate or that you want to get removed or that you just regret? And let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Alex from the 407. Alex from the 407. Where is the 407, bro? Orlando. Orlando, okay. So we're asking, is there a tattoo that you hate that you regret that you have? Uh yeah, actually I got I got one on um on my lower back that I lost on a bet. I don't even know what it is. Bro, you got a tramp stamp? <laughs> you a whole grown ass man with a tramp stamp? He lost on a bet. No, it's not a, it's not really a tramp stamp because it's on the side. That's not in the middle. What does it say? What does the tattoo say? What was the bet? So I lost I lost it because I lost in a soccer game uh, a couple years ago, and I don't know what it says. My friend had to do it on me. So you've never read it? It's either Japanese, Korean, or Chinese. That's oh, it's in Japanese but... letters. Oh, What's your friend's name? Man, I can't say that. Well, it probably says uh, your friend's name was here. That's probably what it says. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Hey, man. It's a bet. It's a bet. Yeah, you can't be betting on stuff like that. Goodness gracious. All right. Hey, man. I see Anthony betting his booty, and he don't even uh, let everybody get it. You said what now? <laughs> what? What happened? Anthony betting his booty. You say your friend did what in your booty? No, that's not what I said, man. Stop playing with me. What did you say? You said something about booty and everybody gets it. I said I said DJ Envy be betting his booty on football games. 
Oh yeah, that's true. No, no, yeah, I didn't hear <laughs> you. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's true. He that, does. Just a try, but I'm never gonna pay up. He does. He does. He does. He does. You did, but you're on the football I'm never paying that up. No, that was an ass bet. Trav said he collected though. No, he not collected. Trav said he saw them devil tattoos on your ass cheeks. That's what he told me. He not collected. Hello, who's this? <laughs> what's up, Amber? Going on? What's up, man? Oh man! What's up, man? What happened? Oh, what's happening, my brother? What's going on? Man, I can't call it, man. You, you might spoil it. Work. It work. If you call it, you might spoil it, huh? Man, what'd you say? If you got, never mind. You got a tattoo you regret? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Where at? Plenty. My um, where my my head why? I was like nineteen. We ain't together. You know how that go? Damn. All of mine. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know how that <laughs> goes, no, no. but I can feel your pain. So you gonna take it off? <laughs> oh yeah, I covered it up. I covered it up. I ain't, I ain't get it removed. I covered it up. You covered it up. Okay. What else you got? That's About it. Two years ago. That's the only one. That's the only one. That's the only one. I, I bet you, if you did a poll, that's the biggest tattoo that people have that they regret, like an ex's Ex- name. Absolutely. Yep. Hello, who's this? Good morning. This is Cherish. Hey, Cherish. Hey, Good Cherish. morning. You got a tattoo that you you hate? Um, I ha- I'm gonna say I hate all of my tattoos because I got them in my early 20s by like hood uh, tattoo artists, so they all look like I got them done in the basement. Damn, me, you and me both, but, man. <laughs> but I will not get them removed because I feel like they are a part of our story, and I feel like we kind of falsify our stories when we remove the parts that you know we, we no longer identify with but we keep the things that we are okay with nah you, um, you can remove the ugly ass tattoos that's interesting <laughs> that's, no, 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 no that's that's a good perspective you know mm-hmm. it it is strange when your kids ask you about certain things like your tattoos though you know what i mean yeah yeah you know i never had the dripping cherries or anything like that but i do have the ex's names um i never got them removed I did get it covered up though because me and my ex got him at the same time, and long after we broke up, he kept at like he kept thinking there was hope because I still had his name tattooed on me. So <laughs> I had to get it covered up, and I want him to get mine removed as well, so he knows that there is no hope. <laughs> Damn. Nah, it is interesting though, man, because you know sometimes when you like I said earlier, when you look back at your life, you realize why certain tattoos mean mean something to new, to you now. Like, they meant one thing back then. Like, I got Wolverine from the X-Men holding a microphone in his hand because I've always loved Wolverine. That's my favorite character. And his power is, is the ability to heal. And I thought I was going to be a rapper, so that's why he's holding the microphone. Microphones did change my life because, you know, of radio and podcasting and everything else. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm real big on mental health and people actually healing so now I understand why I gravitated towards Wolverine all those years ago did that person ever have a license to, to do your tattoos no so I, it was illegal in South Carolina to get tattoos in the 1900s I can tell hello who's this hey it's Ashley hey Ashley good morning good morning good morning you got a tattoo you regret what's that negro's name man I'm gonna tell you the truth it ain't even a man it was a female oh, oh you thought man. you was gay Oh, I, well, I must have thought. I, I wouldn't say gay. I experimented. You experimented, okay. So her tongue was that good you put her name <laughs> on you? <laughs> oh, and I thought I fell in love. But thank goodness, the tattoo was supposed to say today, tomorrow, forever. Because we use the number 224 as a little code. Today, tomorrow, forever. Mm-hmm. I sat through the today, a star on top of it. And I'll tell you what, the tomorrow and forever never happened. Oh, so it just says today? It just says today. <laughs> it just says today because I was laying on my stomach with my right arm out. So it ripped today. And by the time I stood up and seen it, it was going down my arm. Damn. 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 Every day so the sun said, don't shine. Yeah, Every day the sun don't shine. That's why I love tomorrow. <laughs> hey, that's why it says today. Amen. Tomorrow and forever. So question, you gave up uh, Lady Tongue for the rest of your life? Mm, no, I have not. I am a single mom, three girls. My oldest daughter's father got killed by the cops in 2017, and I have been undecided ever since. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear. Well, the the death. I mean, not if the, I could meet a man mom. who's an, if I could meet a man, I'd consider it. Okay. But in this generation, they ain't no real men. True. True. I'm true. I'm and I gotta I gotta look for 50 or older for people who are on my level. Damn, that's real. That's real. I get what you're saying. I understand. All right. So oh. with a female, sometimes you know, sometimes it's if, very rare. They're very immature too now. But you don't want a relationship with them. You just want them. You want them to be a munch, basically. The tongue action. Uh, not 
necessarily. I mean, I've been in a female relationship for two years. So okay. I can't say it's not, you know, it would never happen. It just, it depends on the person. True. All right. Well, I am sending you, you yeah, healing energy, man. Girls 18, uh, I got three girls with 18, 17, and 10, and their opinion matters. So a girl or a guy, you know, they got to pass the three tests in them. Okay, I feel you. All right, well, thank I'm you, sending mama. you healing energy, man. Absolutely. I, I, you know, people call up here and they discuss their traumas so nonchalantly. Like, yeah, my, my husband, boyfriend got killed in 2017 by the cop. Like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and then you said I'm sorry for you, and then she was like, yeah, no, I, I think I like men now too. Like, she didn't even think about you saying sorry of the fact that her husband died. I was not. Yeah, I was not talking about. She was not talking about that, man. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what's the moral of the story? I mean, the moral of the story is I, I, I agree with the young lady who said, uh, well, no, I disagree with the young lady who said sometimes you should, you know, uh, keep things to re to remind you of, of you know, your, your past life. Like, I like what Black Shine is doing. If she's growing, if she's evolving, you know, if she's healing and she wants to get rid of those 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 things that, you know, stop that process. I, I, I have no problem with that. All right. Well, grow. But we come heal, back. Evolve. We got your rumor report now. Charlemagne, what would you rather take? $250 worth of food stamps or dinner with Soldier Boy? Dinner with Soldier all day. Okay. All right. Well, a lot of people didn't think the same way you did. So we'll come back and talk about it. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. My goodness. Taylor in here moving furniture. I don't believe that she did that. Now, because if you notice, if you've been watching the Breakfast Club uh, online and you see the videos, we added a furniture set in here. What do you call this? A comforter? That's it's not a definitely comforter. not a comforter. Love seat? What do you call uh, this? It's a couch. It's a sectional couch. A sectional couch, yes. Oh, wow. Taylor is moving it by herself. Okay. Oh, she is. All right. She's stronger than you thought. Nobody going to get the door for her? I'm not helping her do nothing. Whatever she did to move it. <laughs> <laughs> to move it. She nah, was she was trying to make it. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, morning, everybody. Wow. We are the DJ MV. You really are independent the woman, Taylor. <laughs> we are the breakfast club. <laughs> I didn't know you was that independent. Let's get to the rumors. You cut grass, too? You stupid. <laughs> Let's talk Soldier Boy. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I am gossiping. This is the Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, Soldier Boy was a little upset over the weekend. Now, this is because I don't know where this started from, but I guess they did kind of a challenge where they go around and ask people, would you prefer $250 worth of food stamps or dinner with Soldier Boy? Food stamps or dinner with Soldier Boy? Food stamps. Food stamps? What the f? 250 food stamps. 250 food stamps? I'm going to pick the food stamps only because Soldier Boy is not nobody. I could have dinner by myself. Food stamps. I don't but that corny yeah. 250 in food stamps. To give me the food stamps, I can't make some chicken alfredo. That's the internet being funny because every single one of them groupy ass people, if they saw Soldier Boy walking down the street, they'd be breaking their neck trying to get a picture, trying to get a video for their Snapchat or their Instagram. Knock it off. Well, Soldier Boy responded. Suck my Y'all yes, ain't gonna never make it out the hood. Y'all gonna die, bro. <laughs> Let's go. I wanna have dinner with y'all the A's and 50 hoes anyway. Whoa. I would not have dinner Whoa. With no Whoa. broke ass bitch in New Jersey anyway. <laughs> I would not have dinner with no crackhead ass looking hoes anyway. Y'all bitches could not be in the same Come room on. with me. Come on. Y'all bitches gonna die in the hood. Y'all gonna die broke. Y'all ain't gonna never touch a million dollars. Y'all ain't gonna never touch 30 million. Y'all ain't gonna never touch 100K in a day. You gonna die broke. You you lived your whole life broke. You ain't sh You ain't gonna never be sh now, why wouldn't you want to have dinner with Soldier Boy? I'm going to include Bob and Soldier Boy. That was so entertaining. What did New Jersey do to him, though? Why? I guess they did the video in New Jersey. Damn it, man. Drop on the clues, Bob and Soldier Boy. Okay. <laughs> and you know what's the funny part about that? What's that? Soldier clearly know they ain't hungry. And they ain't Because <laughs> they said they would take the food stamps. Jesus. $250 food stamps is a lot nowadays, though. I would take that $250 in food stamps, but I would still want to have dinner with Soldier Boy. Now, I wonder if inflation wasn't so high. <laughs> <laughs> Put people take dinner over the food stand. Damn it, man. All right, well. Soldier El wins again. Soldier undefeated on the internet. Y'all kiss my ass, okay? Well, eight you ain't beating Soldier Boy no rent. 856 Entertainment is based out of New Jersey. That's why he said F Jersey. Okay. Jesus, Soldier I want to close my Soldier Boy again. Can I hear the first? This is the beginning part of that. <laughs> Let's have a start. Let's play the first 10 seconds. This is the Suck my Y'all think we'll never make it out the hood. All right, all right. Y'all ain't going all right, all right, all right, man. class. Oh my God! Now, uh, you, you know, you know who Afro Man is, right? He does the song <sighs> "When I Get High." Yes, I know Afro. All right. Man. Well, Ohio police officers raided his house, 
Now, they raided his house because they believed that he was selling dope and uh, kidnapping. But uh, they weren't looking for necessarily just uh, kids that were kidnapped or drugs. They were all in his jacket pockets. They were all in his shoes. And they even disconnected his cameras. So, uh, you know, he, he got locked up. They took some of his money. They had to give him back his money back. But they were $400 short when they tried to give him back his money. Why? He ain't never been a dealer. He just always told you he got high. Exactly. That's what he, he doesn't understand. So... He did a record and a video. Now, this record and video is uh, showing the cops raiding his house, and this is his uh, record. Here's the song. That's cool. I like Soldier Boy's response better. Now, that, what? Afro Man should have let Soldier Boy respond. <laughs> respond for him. So now, Afro Man is being sued by those same uh, police officers that ran up in his crib Why? because they said they put his face and his, his their likeness on uh, video. See? That's why he should have let Soldier Boy respond. You can say that same story. Say it. Say it's a police raided. Uh, police raided uh, Afro Man's crib. Uh, they said that they believe he was drug trafficking and kidnapping. And here's his response. Suck my d Y'all <laughs> think gonna never make it out the hood. All right. That's just the thing. Let me tell you something. That response right there goes with everything. I don't care what happens in your life. If you utter them first few right. words, you won, bro. Right. Somebody cut you off in the street. Suck my d Y'all ain't gonna never make it out the hood. Stop it. I'm trying to tell you. Barbershop, barber messes up your haircut. You can't do it no more? Come I'm on. Sorry. See? Suck yeah. my All right. Y'all ain't gonna never make it out the hood. Yeah, you can you can use you can If you hear me playing that all week long for people, boy, I don't care if it's the pastor. The pastor tell me something I don't like. Okay? <laughs> you gonna say what you gonna say? Just just that. Say it. Suck my Y'all ain't gonna never make it out the hood. You going too far. You going too far. You going too far. You going too far. Your kid talk back to you at the crib. No, 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 no. I'm just joking. No, no, no. Now, lastly, uh, Kanye West. <laughs> nah, he didn't say that. Kanye West says he changed his mind about Jewish people after watching Twenty One Jump Street. How did Jewish people respond, right? <laughs> right. How did Jewish people? Y'all ain't gonna never make it out the hood. What are we talking about? He said, man? watching Jonah Hill in 21 Jump Street made me like Jewish people again. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Jewish people, I'm going to respond for y'all, man. Me and Soldier, man. Go ahead. Come on, Ray. One more time. Come on. The moment is past. It's gone. Jesus Christ. But we can still hit it. It's still funny. You don't have no... We, we need to put it on the button bar. Yeah, please, that's, that's a new drop. Yes. I need that on the button bar, please. But he said, no one should take anger against one or two individuals and transform <sighs> that into hatred towards millions of innocent people. Thank you, Jonah Hill. I love you. I didn't see 21 Jump Street. I thought I did in, in on a plane, but there was nothing... That did, maybe did Afro man really about, have? Did Afro man? Did Afro man really have lemon pound cake at the house? <laughs> that's man. what you think about right now. Uh, man, I'm not listening to this silliness. I, I don't even know why that's a story. I don't even know why people report that as a headline. That is ridiculous. That is foolish. Because he put it out. There. Okay, he put it on his, his Instagram. Yes, Twenty One Jump Street is what uh, can beat anti-Semitism. Hey, you never right. know. Okay, yeah, just never Jonah know. Hill. Okay, all right. Sure, S soldier. Suck my. D Y'all think they're gonna never make it out the hood. All right. Charlamagne, we giving your donkey to, man. <laughs> uh, four after the hour, we need uh, Daniel Sealer to come to the front of the congregation. Now, I'm going to be careful with this one. Okay. Because I don't want to be canceled. All right. Because everybody has the right to identify as they wish. We'll talk about it four after the hour. If they try to cancel us, suck my. Y'all think they're gonna never make it out the hood. Don't get a day's up next. is the Breakfast Globe. Good morning. Damn, he hard, dude. It's time for Donkey of the Day. I'm not even trying to be Donkey today no more. They should be embarrassed by what they already did. I didn't, I'm not making these people do these things. Called Donkey of the Day, and it really caught me off guard. Damn, Charlemagne, who got the Donkey of the Day today? <laughs> oh, donkey of the Day. For Monday, March 27th, goes the 65-year-old Daniel Sealer. Now, Daniel is from New York, and I want to be careful with how I report this story because I don't want to be canceled. Okay, I truly respect everyone's right to identify as they wish. All right, that's the era we live in, right? You can identify as whatever you want to identify as, so I don't want to be insensitive to what people feel. All right, but don't let what you feel, or should I say don't let what you identify as, get you arrested, okay? See, Daniel is charged with burglary and petite larceny. He was released on an appearance ticket after police determined he was not a danger to the facility's children or staff. Now, look, I don't know if he's a danger to the children or staff. I think we need a few more psych tests to determine that, but I do know that if he's doing things that are causing him to get arrested, he's a danger to himself. And right now, what he identifies as, or should I say, uh, what he wanted to pretend to be, makes him a danger to himself.
Would you like to know what 65 year old Daniel Sealer did? And then I'll tell you what he identifies as after I let you know what he did. Okay, let's go to ABC 13 News for the report, please. The sheriff's office investigating a burglary at a daycare in Clarkson. Police say 65 year old Daniel Sealer of Holly broke into the Inspire Learning and Child Care over on Lake Road and stole diapers and baby formula. He is charged with burglary and petty larceny. Mm. You know what I hate about that uh, news report is that they didn't even just bury the lead. They didn't even present the lead, okay? Because uh, I read this story this, uh, this morning and the headline was, man breaks into daycare, steals diapers. Now, he didn't steal the diapers and formula, you know, because he had a crying baby at home. No, the headline says, man breaks into daycare, steals diapers, pretends to be a baby. A New York man allegedly entered a daycare center in Clarkson while it was closed, stole diapers and formula, and left notes behind indicating he wanted to pretend to be a baby girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wasn't stealing these things because he had a crying baby at home and couldn't afford, you know, to get the formula and the diapers. No, he just wanted to experience what it felt like to be a baby girl. Okay, Daniel Sealer, 65 years old, identifies as a baby. Okay, not the baby from Charlotte, North Carolina, not little baby from Atlanta, Georgia, not CEO baby uh, from New Orleans, but a real baby, a baby girl like Maggie Simpson. Okay, this man was breaking into the daycare and putting diapers together to make a bigger one. Okay, they said this man drank a half a bottle of formula, used a bib and stole diapers because he wanted to pretend to be a baby girl. The center's director told police an employee found $120 along with a handwritten note on January 30th asking if the daycare had adult-sized diapers and if the staff would play along. The director says they immediately contacted law enforcement upon discovery of the break-in and decided to install a surveillance camera. The director said a similar note was found the following Monday with $200. Okay, and the director said the note included sizes for pants, shoes, bras, and dresses with the man indicating he'd like to play as a baby girl and called himself Baby Daniel. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. What do you call this? Trans infant? Well, it's a baby girl, so it'd be like trans boo-boo. A trans cupcake, trans buttercup. What you call your daughter's envy? Choose. Trans choose. <laughs> huh? Trans little lamb is a trans cranky pants when they get upset is a trans little miss chubby cheeks I just want to know what to properly call this person because I don't want to get in any trouble for calling him the wrong pronoun Now Daniel wouldn't be a non-binary baby because he said he identifies as a baby girl or wants to identify as a baby girl Okay, a non-binary baby is when you're being raised to be gender neutral Okay, when you allow a child to choose their own gender Daniel uh, at the tender age of 65 has chosen his gender Okay, so he's a trans baby girl. Now, on a scale of one to re damn ridiculous, where does this fall? Hmm? 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 re damn ridiculous. Oh, okay. Okay. <sighs> Some donkey today is just sell themselves. Please give Daniel Sealer the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are the donkey mm. of the day. Now, where do you lock an infant up, though? He got arrested for burglary and petite larceny. Mm -hmm. There's no jail for infants. No. Where do you put him? Well, oh, I'm sorry. Where do you put the baby? Uh, are we going to play a game? I don't know what race this person is. Does it matter? <laughs> it does, doesn't matter. He no. cannot, uh, tr truthfully, he can identify with whatever race he wants to identify as. Right? Yeah, I, w I want to identify something. What? I mean, listen. When I was younger, you, you know what I wanted to be. I told y'all this a million times. What? Teen Wolf. Oh. Man, that first Teen Wolf movie, Michael J. Fox got tackled by all those guys, and then he popped up as the wolf mm -hmm. and started bawling on them hoes. Oh, mm -hmm. man. I, you know what I would want to be? What? I would want to be a lap dog to a rich white person. Ooh. Why are you looking at me a, like that? that Think is, about it. I'm going to be honest Think with about you. it. I had never looked at you as a sellout till just now. Look, look, now think about Why it. Why the hell would you want to identify as a lap dog to a rich white person? You get the finest food. What is you saying? You bro? never have to walk. Black man. You fly first class or private. Black, what, what? The best Are hotels. You serious? The best water. You can do. You and, can, then, and then when white people die, they give their fortune to the dog. Why not identify as Oprah? 
You could just be Oprah. You could just identify as Oprah, be a rich black woman, and do all of those things. Nobody gonna carry me around. I you be can carried. pay people to carry you around. No, nah, but when they you do got that, that kind of money, rich people do it with the dogs. They care about the dog more than their this, kids. DJ Envy said, if he could identify as anything, he'd be a, a lap dog to a rich white person. And then when they die, you they don't give know you, how much of a sellout you sound. And then just if now. they get when they die, they give you, you all money. You shouldn't be allowed to use Beijing no more, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. Why? Mm -mm. I don't use Beijing. Well, just Cal. from Ben, what up? <laughs> what you say, Frank? What you say? Cal. <laughs> <laughs> that was silly. I don't find that funny. And Teen Wolf ain't silly? Teen Wolf is way better than being a lap dog for a rich white person. When they die, they give you their money. Boy, you just let the whole Dominican community down, man. I'm, I'm being honest with you. All right. Well, 800 585 1051. If you can to make believe If this you can morning, identify man. as anything. Well, or pretend to be whatever you want to be. That's right. According to this uh, news report, Daniel Sealer said he wanted to pretend to be a baby girl. So I guess that's identifying as a baby girl. A baby girl mm -hmm. named Danielle. So let's play a little game of make believe this morning. All right, eight hundred. If you could be, if you could pretend to be whatever you want to be, what would you be on this fine Monday morning? Envy said it'd be a lap dog for a rich white person, like a Pomeranian. No, that's too big. All poofy. Nobody thinks that sounds crazy. They pet me all day. They give me the finest foods. We travel to the finest if had, places. If you didn't say rich white person, I probably wouldn't even have a problem The with reason it. I got to say rich white person because black people, when they die, they're not going to leave no money to the dog. You could be a rich black person. But they're not going to leave no money to the dog. Black people are not leaving the money to the what dog. What you going to do with the money of the dog, Envy? I didn't think that far. I know you didn't. I don't think you thought this through at all. I don't, to I don't be think totally that honest with you. I don't know, but I'll be rich. I'll be a billionaire. Oh, my God. Roof. What is happening here this morning, man? Roof. Wow. <laughs> What's up with you this morning, man? <laughs> Roof. What happened to you? What's going on, Red? Am I be what's up, man? Y'all funking me or something? Huh? Alright. 800 585 1051 What would you like to identify as? Hey, salute to me. <laughs> 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 Drop one of the clues bombs from Miko Grimes. Miko Grimes said, I don't know why you're surprised if you want to be white. And rich white people F their dog sometimes. <laughs> now, we, now we know what the hell going on. Thank you, Miko. <laughs> Thank you for bringing some clarity to this situation in real time. Let's talk about this. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just join us, we're asking 800 585 1051. What would you want to identify as? And this comes from Charlemagne's Donkey of the Day. Yes, Daniel Seal is 65 years old. He broke into a daycare because he wanted, he stole baby diapers and formula because he wanted to pretend to be a baby girl. He said he wanted to see what it felt like to be a baby girl. He identifies as a baby girl named Danielle. Now, um, Envy said if he could pretend to be anything, he would be a lap dog to rich white people. Yes. That, that is disgusting. Yeah, well, I want to be a dog. I want to identify as a dog. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, rich you dogs. You want to sniff other dogs' ass. They get finest foods. They never have to walk. They fire first class or private, best hotels, best water. And when they die, their owner leaves them all the money. Now, I just want to tell you this one case, right? This happened about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, a dog... The wealthiest dog sold its Miami mansion for $29 million. The owners died, so the dog was left with everything, the house, the home, the butler, and everything. And the dog just sold a crib for $29 million. But, brother, you There's could... There's another dog that's $400 million. My brother, you could identify as Michael Jordan and be a billionaire. You could identify as Oprah Winfrey and be a billionaire. You could identify as Jay-Z, Rihanna, be a billionaire. And do all of those things without being a dog. I personally think you want to go around snipping people's asses. You know what I'm saying? And not be judged for it. That's nope. just my personal opinion. Nope. Now, what would I be if I could pretend to be anything? Mm -hmm. I really, truly do think I'm everything I want to be now. I really can't think of anything. But if I could be something for a day, maybe some type of fish that could go, like, see the depths of the ocean, like, to see what's really down there. But I would want to be, like, a big fish that can't be eaten by other fish. So I'd be, like, trans whales. Okay. Yes. Hello, who's this? Hi, Tanya. Hey, Tanya. Good morning. Talk to us. We're playing make-believe this morning, oh, Tanya. If you, if you could be, so I would agree with uh, with envy and be a, a lap dog for a rich person because they literally do nothing. They get taken care of. They get fed. They don't have to go outside. I actually have a dog, and she is like the princess of the house. And then when they die, no, when they die, rich white people leave the money to them. No, they, they I'm do not, nothing. They, I'm, do. they no. do more than they can. Listen, they can I'm not going to let you. Everything. I'm not going to let you do that. So you want to be a lap dog to a rich white person too, or just a rich person? Rich black person. See, she said rich black person. That's the difference. 
Envy, you said rich black person. They do it too. They all do it too. She's not going to get the I millions of dollars. It. I fly a lot. I even see my dog when he comes up to my fly. And I fly a lot. And I see the dogs. They have their own feet. They get catered to. Everybody does it. A lot of them. If they have money, they do it. So hey. I. See, Todd is with me. Hello, who's this? This is disgusting. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Veronica. Hey, Veronica. Hey, Veronica. What, what would you want to identify as? So me and my daughter talk about this all the time. Um, me and her will come back as a rich white person's dog as well. See? Yo, what is up with y'all, yo? <laughs> See? I yeah. told you. Listen, y'all might... take care of their pets. Let me tell you something. Y'all might... Y'all might as well just vote all the white supremacists and <laughs> no. all the fascists in why? the office. No, 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 I'm going to tell you why. Because if y'all want to be lap dogs, just vote all the, the white no. supremacists and all the fascists in the office. And I guarantee you, you're going to get to see what it feels like to be a rich lap dog for a white person. Oh, I don't have to be a lap dog. I just want to be one of their dogs. They take care, they care about their dogs more than they care about their children, about people. Like, they... Go but hard. the whole thing is, when they die, they leave the billions to the dog. This is something that black people. Well, think I don't know about. about that part. We don't talk about that part. Man, we really got to start. Thank you, Veronica. We, we really got to start making y'all read uh, "Message to the Black Man" by Elijah Muhammad. We joking, man. and now he's taking y'all are not yeah, joking. We, we joking and taking serious. I don't believe we, we joking, and now he's taking serious. My yes, God, you can't joke it when you jokey joke. Oh, y'all don't want to be black no more. I'm just a saying. A lap dog, y'all. This is the second person that said they want to be a lap dog to a rich white person. What's that's up third. with y'all, yo? That's third. Because I'm, I'm. Yeah, you the first. Third. Yes. Hello, who's this? This is real. Hey, Rel. Now, uh, if you can identify as somebody, who, what would you, who would you want to identify as? A deadbeat baby daddy. Why? Why? Yeah, why? Because they live the life. They get up, they ain't got to worry about nothing. They ain't got to worry about nothing but themselves. Then they be having women taking care of them. They got, they live the life for real. By the way, there, there, no, there's nobody that's a deadbeat that wants to be a deadbeat. You know, you know who I call deadbeats? Not, not men, not men who don't have no money. I call people that are deadbeats people who actually have money and have means and don't take care of their kids. Those are the deadbeats. Rico, yo, what's up, guys? Now, if you could identify as anybody or any person, what, what would it be? It would be one of Beyonce, any of them. Beyonce, what? what? Yeah. You said what? One of what? Everything. One of what? Oh, Beyonce's kids. You would want. You would want to be one of the kids. Oh God, you gotta be. They got everything, man. They got. Go. That's the lot. There you. Why come on? You need a phone before so you, you don't, be one of the kids. Well, that's why he want to be one of the kids. He can get a better phone. Work. He want to be one of Jay Z and Beyonce kids, <laughs> so we he can get a no better dog. phone. So you wouldn't be Jay Z and Beyonce's dog? Nah, hell no. Okay. Like you said, y'all, man, some white people f their dogs. I don't know any white people. <laughs> I don't know any white people that f their dogs. You better stop that. You know white people cite your sources. That what? That f white, their dogs? Yeah, white people f their dogs. Cite your sources. I don't know. You could have said kiss their dog, but yeah. It's foreplay. We see them do foreplay. So, so you can't, we see them do foreplay in public. We can only imagine what they do behind closed doors. 800-585-1051. If you can identify as anything or anybody, what would it be? Let's talk about it. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Steady calling my phone. Calling my phone. Tell, tell me, man. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're asking if you can identify as anybody, what would it be? I'm going to be honest with you, man. Um, I, I wanted to identify as Teen Wolf when I was young. Um, I wouldn't mind being a fish just for a day, but I want to be like one of those big fish that don't get eaten by other fish so I can see the depths of the ocean. I'm already an alien, you know what I mean? So I identify as that. But this morning, I ain't going to front, man. I'm feeling like Soldier Boy. Suck my d- Y'all ain't gonna never make it out the hood. Feel like Soldier Boy? This is my mood. I never, I, you know what? I never really thought about identifying as anything else, but I was trying to think. You're what's, a liar. What's this the morning you said job? you want to be a lap dog. You, what's the easiest job out there that you do nothing and people pamper you? That's a lap dog. You see how those people with their lap dogs? By they the way, carry them on a private jet. They care about them lap dogs more than anything. You said they you want to be club. a lap dog for a rich white person. I'm going to tell you. They take them to the club. They take them to everything. And the reason I like them so much is because when they die, they leave their money to their dogs. You don't know what them people is doing to them dogs behind <laughs> closed doors. You have no idea. Okay, for all you know, them dogs could have a whole surviving series on their rich white homes. Surviving survive white people? <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hey, what's your name? This is C from Tallahassee. C from Tallahassee. Now, if you could identify as anything, what would it be, mama? I just wanted to agree with Envy about identifying as a lap dog to a rich white person. Oh, my God. 
Why? I mean, have you have you seen the documentary on Netflix on Gunter? I mean, yeah, his owner left him like billions of dollars. In fact, how would he spend it when well, he has people in charge of you know, of booking his hotels, of giving getting him the finest meats, and cooking his uh, the way he likes it, so I agree with him. Gunther wow. just sold that house in Miami for thirty million dollars. Who is this person? Gunther is a, a German Shepherd. Listen, yes. why, why can't y'all? Why, why won't y'all identify as the actual billionaire? He dies. Why would you want to identify the dog going to die? He too? dies at the end of the movie. Why would you want to identify the dog? The dog still alive. Dog yep. ain't got to do nothing. Okay, dog ain't had to work to get that money. I don't know if dogs live longer than humans. Well, this is disgusting, you, man. Thank you so much. Insert Soldier Boy rant for all of you black people who want to be uh, lap dogs for rich white people. Insert Soldier Boy rant. Suck my d Y'all ain't gonna never make it out the hood. Hello, who's this? Yo, this is me. Hey, what's up, bro? If you could identify as anybody, who would you want to identify as? Uh, I have to go with a monkey. A monkey? A monkey. Okay, why a monkey, sir? Because I like... Where you live at, man? <laughs> hey, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Drop on the clues bombs for white people. I don't know what white, I don't know what number white supremacy has done on you Negroes, but y'all can identify as whatever y'all want to identify as. And all we hearing is black people calling up here saying they want to be lap dogs for white people, and now you want to be a monkey. Where you calling from, bro? His phone cut. He need a phone. That's what he needs. Phone cut off. What is up, man? Hello, who's this? Yeah, this is Brianna. Hey, good morning, mama. What would you want to identify as? So, well, first of all, I wouldn't want to identify as anything. I want to comment that I think this guy has got some mental health problems. Um, identifying as a baby is absurd. I think he needs to get some help. Uh, and he's definitely not a part of the trans community. Why is he not? Because um, this is not normal behavior to try to identify as other objects. I feel like trans people identify either as a man or a woman or neither or both. When they try to take it out of their realms, then it becomes a mental health problem. So I, I'm, I'm, I guess we must be using the word wrong, though, because I hear people say transracial, right? I don't believe in that either. That That's, that's absurd. I don't know if we should just discredit these people, man. I don't know if that's fair to them. I would definitely discredit them as having mental health problems. Well, you wouldn't want anybody to do like, that to you when it comes to like gender identity, right? Because there's some people. I feel like there's some people. There's some people who beyond, feel that. Uh, uh, if it's beyond the gender identity, it should. It, it, if they want to do it, fine. But that's not a part of the trans community. That needs to be. Make up a whole nother group for them. Make something else up. Well, give them another letter. Add another letter to the LGBTQ. <laughs> I'm serious. Thank, thank you. I, thank I you. Thank I, you, Mama. Like I don't. She, why? Why do they? Why do people do that? She's the fun police. She just killed everything. It was just. It was. Uh, no, you killed everything when you said you want to be a lap dog for a rich white. Mad person. people call, and there's two people on the lines. It's not just me. Jesus Christ. You see, you always want to make things racial. Hello, who's this? You made it racial. You said a rich white person. I, you said that. I was talking about the lap dog. Oh, my God. Hello? Yeah, hi. Hello. Hi, Envy. Good morning, Mama. Good morning. What would you want to identify as? Turn your radio down. I want to identify myself as a fairy queen, what my name means. A fairy queen? A fairy queen. What do you mean you want to be? What are you talking about? You said what would I want to identify myself if I want? Yes. What would you want to identify? She wants to be as? a fairy queen. Leave her alone. Fairy Don't judge queen. her. Huh? Hello. Hello. Tanya means fairy queen. Yes. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, yeah. What what I, what, but what, now what, you know. Why? Don't... And I'm mad at you, Envy. Why? For saying you want to be a white person, a black dog. You should get donkey of the week. Thank you, Tanya. But you want to be a fairy queen? Okay. I get well, nothing wrong with being a fairy I... queen. Hello, who's this? Hey, what's your name? Good morning, this is Maddie. Hey, Maddie, good morning. What would you want to identify as? Listen, I agree with Envy 100%. Charlamagne is hating on you, okay? Our lap dog, the rich white person, <sighs> for sure. I think y'all hating on yourself. But, I think y'all hate y'all no, black skin. No, but I'm skin. going back to work this morning after being off for a week, and I said I need to identify as one of Envy's kids. <laughs> Any of them. Give me Logan. <laughs> Logan? You want to be the man of the house? <laughs> He was stuck in the Lamborghini yesterday, so I'll be Logan. Oh my goodness! Logan was in a Lamborghini yesterday. Yeah, he uh he uh was picking up my picking up the kids yesterday, picking up his brothers and sister, and he ran out of gas, so I had to go help him out. 
So let me ask you. Let me say, let me let me talk to you, my oh, brother. Oh my goodness. You 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 your son Logan, uh, Logan just got a scholarship to the University of Miami, mm-hmm. driving around in a Lamborghini. But you want to be a lap dog for a rich white person, even with even with how good you doing in life. You still want to be a lap dog for a rich white person. I don't Who ident- taught you to hate yourself? I don't want to identify as anybody. We are talking. Who taught you to hate your nose? Jokes. Who taught you to hate your lips? I love my nose. Who taught you to hate the color of your skin, I love the color black of my skin. man? I love everything about Who? me. Who? I love everything about me. I can't tell. Well, you want to be Teen Wolf, huh? Huh? You want to be a wolf and animal, huh? Who told you to hate your color, your skin? Why can't you just say, I want to be my black First self? First of all, Teen Wolf was black. No, he wasn't. He was. No, he wasn't. Michael J. Fox, when he turned to Teen Wolf, he turned into a black person. Why do you think he was so good at basketball? Yo, shut up. It's easy. No, that's not <laughs> What do you mean? Me. Why do no, you think no, he was so good true. at no, basketball? No, no, Like, just common sense. Then you want to be a fish? A fish? You want to be a fish? You just want to pucker your lips all day? <laughs> <laughs> Logan, this is why you the man of the house, King. Logan, it's time for you to just take completely over, bro. This, this is it. Envy, Envy clearly has relinquished his role as man oh, of the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Logan, you keep doing your push-ups. You, you can take over at any time, Logan. You do know this, right? It's yours. The kingdom is yours. Oh, my goodness. All right? All right. Whenever you're ready to take over the KC kingdom, it is yours. All right, well, let's get to the rumors. We'll tell you whose girlfriend says she'd prefer... His friend than him at first. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty uh, patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on the Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On the Breakfast Club. <sighs> now, Tyrese, uh, he's in the news again. He was trending over the weekend. Uh, not because of his record, but because he was on live and his girlfriend said that she was more into Paul Walker than him. How do we meet? Mm-hmm. Slid in the DMs. We linked up. He wasn't my type at all. We my did. type was actually Paul Walker, rest in peace. <laughs> he wasn't my type at all. And my don't, type is not white. I'm just saying I was more interested don't in touch me. Paul and every don't, fast and furious. Don't touch me. Even when I met him, I was like, uh, don't, don't he's kind of old. I just like his smile. It's pretty cool. Personality this was, just went really bad, really fast. His personality was okay, but he I'm getting off live, so you wanted the homie. Models. You didn't want me. Um, I never and, said I wanted the homie. I just said he was cuter. Damn. Damn. Damn she, she about to make Tyrese make another remix to She Never Loved Me. Jeez. It's about to be another one. Drop on the clues bombs for that young lady. Even though Dr. Umar doesn't approve. I feel Tyrese deserves that for whatever reason. She, she didn't have to say that, though. <laughs> I crazy. laughed so much at that video. <laughs> Yo, me too, I, I sent that video to Tyrese with just <laughs> laughing emojis. And I put hashtag beautiful pain. She never loved you. <laughs> Yo, you are a foul friend. You are a foul owl friend. Now, oh, uh, this man. morning we report. I don't believe that was real, though. You don't think so? Nah, I think, Why not? That, was, I think that was for the gram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think that was real. Now, this morning we reported Jonathan Mage, as we tell you, uh, that he was arrested for allegedly assaulting a woman. Now, uh, now TMZ uh, said that uh, the 33-year-old actor was in custody Saturday morning. He was released, no bond. They said he physically attacked her during a domestic dispute. Now they're coming back and saying that Jonathan Major's attorney said this was not true, that the young lady uh, recanted uh, the statement and that there were uh, witnesses there and it says actual video and all those things show something different. Yeah, I don't I don't know what's true and what's not true, but I don't understand people's need to be judge, jury, and executioner based off allegations and accusations. Like, it's actually disgusting how we are so quick to condemn and demonize uh, a person, especially a black man, based off allegations. And the reason I'm, I'm quick to say a black man because you don't see this type of press for, for, for Dana White who was actually on video. You don't mm-hmm. see this type of press for uh, Ezra Miller, who's playing The Flash. You didn't see this type of press for Jeremy Renner, who played Hawkeye. They all had similar allegations, and I don't recall any of them getting crucified the way I saw Jonathan uh, getting crucified on social media. I saw people saying it's over for this brother, and I don't understand the rush to wish that, wish that on him mm-hmm. when we don't even know, know any happened. of the facts of the situation. Like, Absolutely. zero. We're finding out this morning that he's the one who called 911 on the woman. And his lawyer mm-hmm. said they got video footage from the vehicle where the uh, episode took place. And mm-hmm. they got witness testimony from the driver and other people who say they saw the whole thing. And they say they got two written statements from the woman recanting these allegations. Once again, I don't know what's true and what's not true. Right. All I know is neither do y'all. 
Okay? Right. Like, they just love this man the past couple of weeks. And because of an accusation that folks don't even know if it's true or not, now he's the villain. This is why you shouldn't believe anything from these people. Not the love, not the hate. None of it is real. All people do is get online and wait for social media to tell them how they should feel about certain situations. Right. And you know what you should feel about this situation? Nothing yet. Because you don't know the facts. Mm -hmm. You don't know anything. Mm -hmm. And oh, lastly, disgusting. I just want to uh, drop a bomb for Jay-Z. His net worth rose over $2 billion. Uh, last month, he closed a deal on his Bacardi Duce steak. And they say with that, he's like close to $2.5 billion. So... Congratulations to Jay Z. But it's, instead of you wanting to identify as Jay Z, you'd rather be a lap dog for a rich white man. You'd rather be a fish. You could have said a Jay -Z. free fish, a free fish that puckers all day. A free fish that puckers all day. Mm -hmm. All right, not puckering for the white man. Nah, I ain't puckering. A free fish. Cause I could bite I a, a free fish. I could bite a white person. They still gonna love. No, you. you're not. That's when they gonna euthanize you. Quick, fast, in a hurry. No, they not. Yes, they are. They love their dogs. All right. That's so, tell you about Gunther. Who the hell is Gunther? Gunther is the dog that a white person left five hundred million dollars for. He just sold his house in Miami for thirty two billion to thirty two million dollars. A dog sold a house? Yes, Gunther. You believe that? That's his name, Gunther. All right, man. Show that dog some respect. Salute to Hove, man. All right. And the winner is Gunther. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The winner is Hove. People's Choice Mix is up next. And again, shout out to everybody in Memphis. Oh, My man. car show is coming to Memphis. Of course, we're doing it to celebrate Young Dolph's life. So I'm going to have Young Dolph's whole fleet. Uh, we're going to have the Young Dolph Museum, which shows his artifacts, his jewelry, his clothes, some artwork. We're going to have rides for the kids. There's so much going on. So get your tickets if you haven't got your tickets. And kids five and under are free. So definitely get your tickets. Memphis, we're going to have a lot of fun. People's Choice Mix is up next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Up. Now, I want to shout out to uh, Memphis again, man. Memphis, you, you guys are showing up and showing out. Of course, the car show May 28th, which is Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we're bringing the car show to Memphis. And we're doing it with Young Dolph and his estate. And it's going to be a lot of fun, man. We got about his whole fleet, which is about 20 cars. We got Key Glock's cars, 50 cars, and some more celebrity friends. That's going to be announced soon. We got uh, the Dolph Museum, which is going around city to city now, where you can actually see some of his artifacts, his jewelry, his artwork, and, and, and pictures, and so many different things. We have rides for the kids, face painting, jumpies, and food. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you haven't Got your tickets, get your tickets. And if you want to put your car in the show or you want to be a vendor or sponsor, you can always email me at DJ Envy at car, uh, DJ Envy car show at gmail.com. Again, it's DJ Envy car show at gmail.com. That's right, man. And I want to tell everybody uh, thank you for purchasing tickets to the first ever Black Effect Podcast Festival, which is happening Saturday, April 22nd in Atlanta at Pullman Yards. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if y'all keep purchasing tickets the way y'all purchase the tickets, we are absolutely going to sell this thing out. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage y'all to uh, go to Eventbrite to get your tickets, man. Some of your favorite podcasts performing live, like the 85 South Show, uh, Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon with Reasonably Shady, Mandy and Wheezy with Horrible Decisions, uh, Michelle Williams will be there doing her checking in podcast live the big facts podcast will be there with dj scream uh big bank and baby jade just to name a few uh we got food my man dj louis v is providing the soundtrack we're gonna have the black effect marketplace where it's gonna be some of your favorite local businesses in atlanta they'll be there set up it's hosted by myself and my good sister jess hilarious so join us saturday april 22nd atlanta georgia Pullman Yards. Go to Eventbrite to get your tickets and go to blackeffect.com for more information. Uh, we will see you there. All right. Well, when we come back, we got the positive notice. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Uh, it's time to get up out of here. You got a positive note? I do have a positive note, man. And the positive note on this Monday morning is actually some positive motivation by a great black philosopher by the name of DeAndre Cortez Way. Oh, boy. All right. This little bit of advice should motivate you uh, to get up, get out, and get something this morning. Suck my Y'all ain't gonna never make it out the hood. Y'all gonna die, bro. Y'all have a blessed day. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?